All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and things are getting really, really interesting around here, man. I already did a Deron Payne video on talking about him as far as cap space goes and whether or not we'll be able to pay him long term, whether we should franchise tag him and stuff like that. Make sure you go check that video out. But then, yesterday slash today, whenever you're watching this, apparently Cameron Curl's dad tweeted that Cameron Curl is going to take no less than $80 million in a contract extension. That is crazy. So we got to take a dive into Cameron Curl, whether he's worth that type of money. Take a look at the safety market and see how he compares to other guys that are around his talent level and production level and how important he is and how they are to their respective teams. Because we know Cameron Curl is vital to this defense. We saw that outside of the Cowboys game. This defense has been atrocious without him. And I'm pretty sure his agent, his dad, and himself as a Cameron McCurl all know that but we got to take a look at the safety market what are other guys in his talent and production range getting and does he deserve that same amount a little bit less or a little bit more let's try to guess and predict Cameron McCurl's future contract extension with the commanders or do we just not end up signing them because do we feel like 80 million is too expensive so we got to dive into all of those options just like how we dove into all of the Deron Payne options also the NFL officially came out and informed teams of the exact 2023 salary cap for this upcoming season so we got to take a look at exactly what the commanders have now that we know exactly how much the salary cap is now that it's officially been released and decided upon and then i also want to take a quick look at the history of the salary cap just to give y'all a quick little background on how much has gone up and up every year or even down because of the covid year and after we take a look at the cap space do we feel like we can afford Cameron curl and deron Payne? especially after cutting Carson Wentz, we'll see. So before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every Sunday for the live call-in show. Just because of the commander season is over does not mean the street score season is over. I live stream every Sunday and I open up the phone lines for y'all to call in. You ask whatever questions you may have or voice whatever opinions you may have. Anything. It could be franchise quarterbacks. It could be drafting quarterbacks over Sam Howell. It could be bringing in a veteran quarterback over Sam Howell. It could be offensive coordinators. Who do you prefer? It could be whether or not you want to pay Deron Payne a franchise tag on, or even what we're talking about in this video. Are you willing to give Cameron Crow $80 million? All of that type of stuff. I open up the phone lines for you to call in and be a part of the show and voice your opinions on everything. So make sure y'all pull up every Sunday for that, man. We talk everything, commanders, NFL, basketball, whatever, man. Pull up with whatever information you have. And without further ado, let's get it. All right, so first of all, the Washington Times released an article and discussed Cameron Curl's potential contract extension and how the commanders may address it and how much he may be worth and things like that. And they do a whole dive into how much Terry McLaurin got paid, how much Jonathan Allen got paid, how much Deron Payne may get paid and things like that. And they just try to explore whether or not the commander should even prioritize him as far as a potential free agent and all of that type of stuff. And then so Cameron Curl's dad, Greg Curl, came out and said, Cameron Curl's possible contract extension looms over the commander's offseason plans, dash Washington Times. And then he put under that nothing less than 80 mil. And so, first of all, that's really interesting because when you say nothing less than 80 mil, what do you mean by that exactly? Like, are you saying 80 mil over three years or 80 mil over four or five years? Because those are completely different numbers. And if you're talking 80 mil over five years, yes, please. Because 80 mil over three years is $26 million per season. But 80 mil over the course of five years is $16 million per year. So those are big differences. So what are we talking, Greg Curl? Let me know. Or at the very least, let the commanders know. But just to take a look at the current commander situation as far as free agents goes, remember Cameron Curl is technically not a free agent until the 2024 offseason. But we may want to go ahead and get in front of it, pay him this offseason before the price goes up. Cameron Curl might have one of those crazy seasons where he finally gets recognized as the pro bowler that he honestly is already. He already plays like a pro bowler. If we haven't noticed it in just the fact that how well Derek Forrest plays when Cameron Curl's out there and how poorly he plays when Cameron Curl isn't out there or just the entire defense in general outside of the Cowboys game, I think our defense allowed like 30 points per game without him. But then the games that he was there, we only allowed like 20 something points or less. Like it was a huge difference. Teams were struggling to score 20 
20 points against us when Cameron Curl was out there, but scoring 30 points against us looked like a breeze with Cameron Curl not out there. And again, even just Derek Forrest, as much as we believe in him and as excited as we are for him to be a part of a great DB group and a great safety group specifically, Derek Forrest looked like a completely different player with Cameron Curl out there compared to when he wasn't out there. I mean, blown coverages, all kinds of crazy mess. Just look at the tape against the 49ers with Cameron Curl not out there compared to the tape of when Cameron Curl was out there for the majority of the season. Look at the tape of this entire defense against the Lions when Cameron Curl was not there compared to the rest of it. So he has a lot of leverage. Now, granted, with him not making the Pro Bowl or the All-Pro, even though he did receive some votes, the commanders can come back with that type of leverage to the negotiation table. But then at the same time, again, like I just said, the way this defense looks with and without him are completely different night and day. And the agent is going to come with that. His dad is going to come with that. But again, just to backtrack a little bit, remember, he's not a free agent until 2024, along with Curtis Samuel, Kendall Fuller, Chase Young, if we don't pick up his fifth year option, Bobby McCain. I want to do a video on that too. Chase Young's fifth year option, whether it's worth picking up or not. JD McKissick, Cornelius Lucas, Montez Sweat, Antonio Gibson, Sadiq Charles, Jay Smith Williams, Casey Tuhill, David Bada, Dejon Harris, and Alex Akinbulu. And as of right now, the only player they even have a market value for according to spot track with all of the calculations they do the historical context the comparison to other players as far as their talent and production where they feel like those guys fit in and how much money they could potentially get and how much money they deserve the only guy we know so far that spot track has done a calculation for with the equations and all of the math that they do is 16.6 million dollars per year which is cheaper than i expected and i'm willing to do that but they don't have one for cameron curl sadly but remember he's coming off of a contract being an ex seventh round pick making less than nine hundred thousand per year on his contract so we can't even necessarily reference his previous contract because he wasn't getting paid much on that either way and that's not going to help us in any way to try to project his next contract at all but looking at the rest of the safeties in the nfl and some of the top ones you have derwin james who's making the most per year 19 a year you have minka fitzpatrick all pro who's making 18.2 per year and both of those guys got contracts recently they won't be free agents till 2027 so they set the market then you have kevin Byer who's about to be a free agent in 2025 making 14 million per year marcus williams with the ravens not a free agent until 2027 out here making 14 million per year as well then you have jamal adams who will be a free agent in 2026 making 17.5 million per year harrison smith is making 16 million per year justin simmons is making 15 per year buddha baker's making almost 15 per year eddie jackson is making 14.6 quandre Diggs is making 13 and then when we finally get to another safety whose contract ends within the 2023 or 2024 offseason because everybody else i've said so far as contracts don't end until 2025 or later but you have adrian amos whose contract ends in 2023 making nine million per year again safeties just don't make a lot of money man i mean even with the franchise tag information that officially came out for how much guys get paid if they were to get franchise tag for this 2023 season not the 2024 season but the 2023 season and safeties is one of the lowest the only positions lower than safety are kicker and punter obviously tight end and running back that's it other than that everybody else gets paid at the very least four million dollars per year more than what safeties get so safeties aren't even a highly valued position you can be an all pro like derwin james like minka fitzpatrick you can be the best of the best like kevin byard and marcus williams and jamal adams and you're still at the most the most any of these guys is making is 19 per year with a total value of 76 million dollars from derwin james over the course of his entire contract so this 80 million that greg curl is talking about is a little insane because i love Cameron Curl but I wouldn't necessarily consider him the best safety in the NFL and the best safeties in the NFL right now Derwin James 76 million dollars over the course of his entire contract Mika Fitzpatrick making 73 Kevin Byer making 70.5 Marcus Williams making 70 Jamal Adams making 70 and I know every time a new contract gets done you're supposed to reset the market and take the price even higher I love Cameron Curl but man 80 million and none of these guys are even making 77 none of these the best guys that are all pros first team all pros pro bowl after pro bowl after pro bowl so that 80 million in my opinion is definitely unrealistic but i do feel like he's at the very least worth maybe like somewhere in the 60s over the course of like four or five years and give him somewhere around like 15 a year i think that's really good i think that would be very good for him i feel like that's a win-win for both of us love cameron curl and i feel like he deserves a lot more respect than he's getting but at the end of the day he's not making pro bowls he's not making all pro teams 
teams. And I feel like he's dramatically underrated and he deserves to make those. But at the very least, the commanders could come to the negotiation table and be like, you haven't made any of these top tier lists. The only list that really loves you is pro football focus out here. So 80 million little crazy unless we're talking over the course of like seven seasons which is like a ridiculous impossible contract and then again like i already talked about in the intro briefly mentioned the nfl informed teams today that the 2023 salary cap will be a record 224.8 million dollars per team that's up from the 208 million for everybody in 2022 and in 2021 it was 182.5 million but it was way less than what it was supposed to be because that was the byproduct of the COVID year which was 2020. every year before that the cap space was just going up and up and up and up the only thing we didn't know was how much it would go up by what extent from 2019 to 2020 it went up 10 mil from 188 million to 198 million for the cap space but then the COVID year hit 2020 so hard that we actually went down for the first time i believe ever in cap space and we went from 198 million to 182 but then it jumped from 2021's 182 million to 2022's 208 million and now we're going from 208 million to 224 million which is a huge jump because the jump is normally somewhere in the single digits and we just jumped 16 million that's really crazy that's a little bit higher than a lot of people expected so now we officially have 6.8 million dollars worth of cap space going into free agency which lands us 17th in the nfl and again like i've already done a whole video breakdown of our cap space like a full in-depth one and how we can end up getting 58 million if we make the right moves but that's a whole nother video you would have to check that out i'm not going to dive too deep into that today but if we wanted to get rid of carson wentz which we will do that's done that would put us at almost 33 million dollars worth of cap space which would move us up to seventh in cap space in the nfl at the very least eighth so that's really interesting we could go from 17th to top eight in cap space in the nfl which would be very helpful as far as trying to pay deron Payne long term and Cameron Curl, who we're talking about today and even bring in outside free agents specifically offensive line and again I did a whole video breaking down how we can get 58 million from cutting certain guys and how much we would get from each cutting things like that go check that out I'm not going to dive into that today but I just wanted to let y'all know how much cap space the commanders officially have before and after we cut Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz is a done deal he's gone but there are also other cuts we can end up making so make sure you go check out that video man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video especially this Cameron Curl situation do you feel like he's worth 80 million dollars which is the most in the nfl for any safety he will be the highest paid safety in the nfl easily by at least three million dollars if we were to do that do you feel like he's worth that or not and also man please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name is scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out